Now, we know that more families are struggling to provide food for their families during the coronavirus pandemic, but we want to dig into some of the details for you. According to census data, the number of Americans who say they cannot, cannot afford enough food for themselves or their children is growing. Experts say it will get worse now that some government benefits have expired. The data shows, as of last month, about 12% of adults lived in households that didn't have enough to eat at some point in the previous week. That's up from roughly 10% in early May. Almost 20% of Americans with kids at home couldn't afford to give their children enough food. Now to the hazy, smoky skies in California, a result of hundreds of fires burning out of control. Right now, fire officials are fighting two blazes that are so far the second and third largest in the state history. And according to health officials, the smoke from those fires is causing parts of the U.S. to have some of the dirtiest air in the world, adding another layer of concern amid this pandemic. RT's Natasha Sweet has the report from Los Angeles. Copy, shut down. Wildfires raging in California, taking seven lives in over 1,200 reported structures. The Golden State has been hit by 650 wildfires across the state, many sparked by more than 12,000 lightning strikes recorded since August 15th. Close to 300 lightning strikes we experienced in the last 24 hours. As I noted, uh, 10 new fires uh, in the last 24 hours. The LNU Lightning Complex and the SCU Lightning Complex fires are the second and third largest blazes in state history, both of which are still under investigation and not fully contained. Thousands of residents are forced to evacuate as the air quality worsens throughout the state. According to the Environmental Protection Agency's Air Quality Index, roughly one third of California was reported to have air unhealthy for all members of the general public. And according to PurpleAir.com, parts of the Bay Area have the worst air quality in the world, even surpassing India. The EPA calculates the air quality index based on five major pollutants, which can penetrate into the lungs and even cause healthy people to have bloody noses. And according to health officials, exposure to particle pollution is even linked to premature death. Brian Sullivan has a look at the potential fallout for energy companies in the region. Brian, how big of a threat is this for U.S. output? Well, it, well, it's a big threat, but it's also a big storm. That map was terrifying. I mean, it takes up about a half of the Gulf of Mexico. All right, let's get the latest on the oil and gas side of the lower story. First off, as you imagine, I'm not breaking any news here. Every refinery in that path is either shut down or being shut down. It should be shut down right now. About 40% of total U.S. refining capacity is now offline. You got about two and a half to three million barrels of capacity that has been cut as well. That'll probably go up. A lot of these companies, guys, are very tight-lipped about exactly the refinery status. They don't kind of want you to know. So you got to make calls, talk to plant managers, whatever it might be. Gasoline futures are actually lower right now, which is a little bit weird, but I'll get to the reasons in a second. Companies impacted by this, the big names you know, ExxonMobil shutting down at least two refineries. Motiva, it's Aramco, the biggest refinery in America, shut down. Valero bringing theirs down. Chevron, Shell, they're all there. That Beaumont area, Lake Charles, that's going to be the center of the storm. Chenier Energy shutting down its Sabine Pass facility. That's right kind of where the M in Beaumont would actually be. That is the, the direct path. So you can see there, that's the really hard hit area. There's a few reasons why gasoline is down right now. Number one, gasoline inventories are higher than last year. It can absorb some hit to production for a while. Number two, you've got refineries that are staying open, only running at about 80% capacity. They can make up some of the slack guys. And of course, demand will drop as people stay home because of the storms. Two quick other things before I go. First, all the ports, of course, are closed. Galveston, Port Arthur, etc. So all the ships are stuck. And check out this map from marinetraffic.com. That is amazing. The dots, red, blue, green, those are ships. If you are not in port, you have scurried over to Corpus Christi or the coast of Mexico because Laura's coming right through. Hundreds or thousands of ships all running away, I think that, Sarah and Kayla, is kind of a perfect inverse map of that storm's path. Truly incredible there. Today's New Yorker details the New York City that he knows and says it may not recover as it continues to grapple with the tripling effects of the coronavirus pandemic, along with the unrest that took place back in June and issues surrounding homelessness and crime. 
Yes, yeah, so, so within the last few months, several residents have packed their bags to leave to nearby suburban areas or even to other states. So what does this mean for the future of the Big Apple? Joining us right now is author and entrepreneur James Altucher to talk more about this. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay, you're coming to us live from Florida. You're home away from home. You say yes. you're a New Yorker. Uh, I'm sure you want to come back one day. I don't know if you will be allowed back after this article because it's pretty scathing on whether the city is going to be dead forever. And right now, it seems like you think that's what's going to happen. Well, it's not necessarily what I think is going to happen. It's what's already happening. I mean, already right now, 30 to 40 to maybe 50% of restaurants and storefronts are closed forever. Like you walk around, it's not like see you soon signs, it's for lease, for rent signs. You also have uh, office buildings that are completely <clears throat> empty because companies are moving workers to remote because the bandwidth is there now. People are having remote meetings, companies are even more productive. And if you lose, you know, Broadway's closed till next spring. If you lose all these different revenue bases, and meanwhile, deficits are going up, as you guys just pointed out in your last three segments. It's going to hit the city. Right. You know, you're, you're losing EMT workers, trash workers, MTA. But it's a uh, it's a problem. But here's the thing. New York has bounced back before. Right. You've compared it in your article. I read the article at length um, to 9-11 and the crime wave in the 70s and 80s. But you said this time is different. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's different because the, the world has never really experienced what we're experiencing now. But if you just compare it to some other things, New York was in tough times and it did come back. You know what? New York City has never suffered through a 10 to 20 percent loss in population, which is what's going to happen now. I mean, already apartment vacancies are at an all time high. And that's not even counting what's going to happen when 600,000 college students realize, oh, we don't need to. There's no on campus education right now in New York City, so we don't have to live there. So what's going to happen to the landlords who had expected they make their living from renting to students? What happens to all the owners of all the office buildings when they go bankrupt or the Broadway show houses or theaters? You know, people, the entire economic ecosystem is in trouble. Yeah, it's like it's a domino effect for sure, James. And, and I think yes. you make some very valid points in this. I, I read it at length as well. And I was, I was as I read, it, I was like, oh, wow, that's a really good point. Let's talk about the office buildings, because that's the majority of New York, right? We see all of these office buildings where people are working in tight quarters. But now because of bandwidth and Zoom and, and all this technology, we can work from home. But don't you think at some point businesses are going to say, yes, this working from home is great, but isn't it more productive for us to be together so that we can talk? There's synergy. There's even competition in being around each other, whereas being apart, you don't have that. You know, that's a great point, but there's a couple of things going on. One is a lot of businesses are unsure about bringing employees back because they don't even know what the liability issues are if employees get sick from the virus. But if there's a vaccine, wave, this wave. could change the whole game. True. But if they realize, oh, my gosh, our costs are going down so much because people are not really that much less productive mm -hmm. using Zoom. Bandwidth well, has never been this good before. The, the employees are so, gone forever. The <laughs> companies will stop renting the office space. James, you know, when you, I, I, I love this conversation because I, I feel like people at home are screaming at their, at their television. And, you, you know, you got some pushback on it. Someone said the only thing that died was convenience and complacency. You left New York. You're in Florida. So, you know, why did you leave? And, and, and sure. for, for, there are New Yorkers who are walking around and saying, you know what? Yes, this is terrible. But all the things you're referencing are things that every city are kind of going through mm -hmm. right now. So is every well, city yeah. going to be dead? Well, I think a lot of cities are going to be in, a lot of the first tier cities, L.A., San Francisco, New York City, Chicago are going to be in trouble. We're going to see a revival of second and third tier cities in the U.S. And let's not forget Opportunity is not going away. Opportunity is going to be dispersed throughout the entire country instead of just one or two hot spots. But look, I only I was here throughout. I was in New York City throughout the pandemic. I left a week ago. Um, I live in New York City. I own a comedy club slash bar in New York City. So I'm not going anywhere and I want things to come back. But I just right now already again, the restaurants are out of business. The office buildings are 90 percent empty, even though they don't have to be uh, commercial mm -hmm. real estate's in trouble. Evictions are going to happen. So all the landlords are in trouble. And then let's not forget, most importantly, deficit New York deficits are yes. going to skyrocket mm -hmm. and tax revenues are going to plummet. 
And that math just doesn't work. Yeah. Like you, you need a city to, New York City is a great city because of all the services it provides and the welfare and the social services, EMT, everything. So this is going away for a while. And for a while, you know, there's no yeah. real solution. That's the key word for a while, not forever, because I am an eternal optimist. <laughs> and I like to believe that while we're all struggling like right now, that this city is the melting pot of the world, right? It is where people come to make it. It's where their dreams come alive. Well, it's where some people might even say this is a great opportunity to invest in New York City because you're going to get a deal right now. I just well, think not, you, not yet. Not you're yet, but when you look at the things, first. you cannot yeah. look at the at the Statue of Liberty in the harbor, right, and say, okay, it's dead forever. This is where people came to make it and thrive, and I think that one day they will. James, I urge people to read it. This is a debate we could have all day in a conversation I'd be willing to have I, offline I like your as well. Optimism. Yes. Thank you for joining us this morning. <laughs> I don't think he's changing thanks, thanks his so stance thanks though. For having me. <laughs> <laughs> for a while. There's no yeah. real solution. That's the key word. For a while, not forever. Because I am an eternal optimist, <laughs> and I like to believe that while we're all struggling like right now, that this city is the melting pot of the world, right? It is where people come to make it. It's where their dreams come alive.